Hey, hey, welcome to this new episode of Climabyte. Today, we're going to talk about permafrost, which is an interesting phenomenon that is found in cold regions that can cause a lot of problems like landslide or the release of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere when it disappears. Permafrost is a phenomenon described as follows. When the temperature of the ground, be it rocks or soil, is consistently below the freezing point of water, which is 0 degrees Celsius, for at least two years in a row, we call that ground permafrost. As you can see on this figure, the ground is warmer the further down you go. We estimate that for every kilometer down you go, the ground is 20 degrees warmer. If you go deep enough, the ground never freezes. In cold climates, the air temperature may be much lower than freezing, especially in winter. The temperature varies in the course of a year, and the air is typically at its coldest in February in the Northern Hemisphere. The cold air temperature is transmitted to the ground, and then the ground gradually freezes. If you drill a hole in the ground and measure the ground temperature across the months, you will find out that the ground is typically at its coldest several months later than February. So, the cold temperature signal moves down the soil at a fairly slow speed. Even in the Arctic, the top layer of the ground can melt during the summer when the temperature is high enough. The scientific word for it is to thaw. This layer is then called the active layer. Below this layer, the ground is cold enough for permafrost to exist. Permafrost can occur in many parts of the world because it is only temperature depending. So, factors elevation above sea level, regional weather patterns, and latitude are important to be able to predict where we can find permafrost. It can usually be found in high latitudes and in alpine areas. The thickness of permafrost varies from a few meters to hundreds of meters, depending on the local climate. One can distinguish several types of permafrost. Continuous permafrost, discontinuous permafrost, and sporadic. Continuous permafrost occurs when the temperature in the ground is constantly below zero degrees over very large areas. For example, you find this kind of permafrost in Siberia, in Russia. These large areas can be dotted with something called talix. Talix are unfrozen layers of ground found underneath lakes or rivers. The layer stays unfrozen because some of the water over it does not freeze during the winter, and the presence of liquid water prevents the formation of permafrost, Sometimes it can even destroy it. Discontinuous permafrost occurs in areas where the temperature varies a lot from season to season, and the permafrost will only cover part of the land. Sporadic permafrost are small islands of permafrost, which occur in areas where the ground is generally not frozen. An example of this is in alpine areas, such as uh, the Alps or Norwegian mountains. Permafrost can create both big and small landforms and phenomena. In later episodes of Climabite, we will talk about these different types. Some of them are pathas, pingos, salty ground in the form of stone polygons or stone rings, thermocast, ice wedges, soliflocation, or rock glaciers. Since the climate is changing and the temperature in the air is increasing, the temperature of the ground is rising as well. This has as a consequence that the layers of permafrost are thinning. This can cause problems on buildings and infrastructure because the ground sort of melts and can't support the structures anymore. The structure will then sink or move or crack. It can also cause landslides when cliffs that were stabilized by the frozen soil are not frozen anymore. In some cases, if large amount of rocks fall from high cliffs into fjords, for instance, they can create tsunamis. That was the key plot in the Norwegian movie Bulgen, The Wave. Another problem with disappearing permafrost is that permafrost soil contains a huge amount of organic carbon. So when the layers thin or completely melt, or thaws, they release greenhouse gas, acting like carbon bombs. 
This creates a vicious circle of warming and melting and warming and melting. In future episodes, we will go further on some of the effects of permafrost on the land around us. I hope you've learned a climabitey thing today. If so, don't forget to like and share this video, and to subscribe to the channel if you want to become even more climabitey. I will see you next time!